So, hello everyone. Hello, my name is Andrei. Uh, I think we can start it briefly. Uh, my name is Andrei. I'm from Double Cloud. I'm technical lead for uh, transfer team and I'm responsible for moving data from point A to point B at Double Cloud. And today we will talking about the Kafka and uh, the interesting topic about Kafka, how to make it, uh, how to enable Kafka streaming with a modern cloud native technologies. Uh, in modern days, Kafka is uh, like a lingua franca for streaming things. So uh, it's always correlated with real-time streaming. Kafka allow you to stream data and allow you to instance access to your data uh, for various analysis. And it's allow you to integrate your application with this Kafka. Uh, so me, Andre, I will be discussing and talking today about Kafka and uh, one particular approach how to use Kafka is a change data capture. Uh, I see the people still joining. I will uh, slowly uh, roll into the into the subject. Uh, so uh, what we will uh, try to uh, use today is a typical use case for change data capture. When we have sort of a application, exist application, your existing infrastructure. This existing infrastructure is usually some sort of transactional database. This transactional database can be somehow streamed into the Kafka in this slide as a queue. It can be not just a Kafka, but anything else, but we will discuss more about Kafka. And then from this queue, we can analyze these events from our transactional database somehow uh, with a different application. It could be either a uh, analytical database, or maybe just a code, or maybe another team. So Q here uh, uh, act as an interface to your database. And the main question is how to get the data from the, your database. And data in your database for Q is not really suitable well, because data in database is usually kind of static, and uh, Kafka is about streaming and changes. So we need to extract changes from these uh, databases. Uh, for that case, there is such a technique or technology. I don't know how to call it properly. It's called change data capture. Most of database provide us uh, a tool to extract a so-called log, uh, change stream of events, uh, what changed in database. And we can actually stream those changes of events later to the Kafka. So uh, the typical event, uh, looks kind of follow. So let's imagine that we have a uh, a database. Uh, we will work with this database through the whole webinar. It will be our pony database. We have a pony database with uh, one particular table, my little pony. In this table, we have uh, rows. So once we insert rows, what we expect, expect to see in our queue, in our Kafka, is not actual rows, but sort of a changes. These changes formatted as a JSON, it can be later consumed for later analysis. Such a format, as you can see here, is called a Tibesium format. Tibesium is a well-known tool, how to stream data from a relational database to a Kafka. And it also provides you not just a tool, but a format. We uh, will look this on this format because it's more or less uh, most popular one across the different tool, and we will uh, focus on this. As you can see here, instead of plain SQL, we have a formatted and structured response. Uh, there is an important he thing here is op, which is an operation, which say is C, which is a create. So we create three entities, and we have after value what we have after this change. After this change, we have uh, rainbow number one, number two, and number three. Uh, for updates, it's act pretty similar. And you can see here the update is a little bit trickier. We update not one rows, but a bunch of rows because we have a predicate. And these generate you two rows, uh, two uh, events in a Kafka, probably should, should generate two events on of a Kafka with a, uh, update values. And the third option is for delete. The delete is pretty much the same. Delete just uh, uh, vary in terms of uh, decent built-in operation, and we don't have after value, we have only before value. So this is basically a change data capture approach. Uh, we will come back to this later, and uh, we will try to build such application here and now with the power of a Terraform and Double Cloud as a platform. So uh, another aspect we need to cover before we start looking into code and actually into interesting past, it what is actually a Terraform. 
Uh, for, for once, however, it would be a little bit boring part, but let's recap it quickly. The Terraform is actually a, a language, uh, the HTML language, and the toolkit that allow you to apply your infrastructure, describe your infrastructure as a code, and apply this infrastructure on different environments uh, with a console utility. So there is a console utility called Terraform. It allows you to plan your uh, changes. And if these changes are okay, you can apply them. So a uh, basic workflow of working with a Terraform usually contains following stages. First of all, we need to write our Terraform code. Here is an example of a Terraform code. It contains so-called providers and resources and data. You write your infrastructure, you describe your infrastructure with the providers, resources, etc. And then uh, you initialize this provider on your environment. It's installed all necessary plugins, all necessary entities, so you can work with this Terraform provider later. And then you plan your changes. This plan perform uh, uh, changes like uh, what it would become later after appliance. But so you can actually review them. In this particular example, we have a resource as a local file and we try to plan what happens after Terraform apply here. And it says that I will add one more local file with hello context text. This is a very simple example. Later, we'll take a look about more complex one. And once we apply this plan, this actually creates you a resource and so-called state. So you can use the state for interaction with other people and actually controlling on your environment. This is a brief description for Terraform. Uh, Terraform is a very powerful tool. It's allow you to not just build infrastructure, but also compose and collaborate with other engineers and people. Um, and usually uh, analytical people and streaming is actually part of, uh, more closer to those domain for analytical domain, not touch a lot of a Terraform, but I think it's still like powerful tool for everyone, not just for SREs, which use, usually use uh, Terraform, but also for data engineers as well. So uh, today we actually focus more on practical side of, uh, of us things. I prepare a small demo, which try to build this kind of application. Uh, I a little bit simplified than this picture, but the idea that we have a transactional database, in our case, it would be AWS RDS instance uh, with a Postgres flavor. In this Postgres, uh, we will have one table with ponies and uh, with a double cloud transfer, we will create a transfer from this database to Apache Kafka, which run also in double cloud. And then we have a small application that consume events from this Kafka and simply analyze the response. We just uh, will read the events and prompt in a console what happens with our ponies. Uh, our poor little ponies. The idea that all of this stuff is actually touch a real world and uh, set up in this in the UI sometimes become a clunky. So I did this with a Terraform and I will show you how to make this kind of infrastructure with a Terraform. And it would be easy for you to uh, either start this and also maintain this because a Terraform can be can and should be committed to source code and like Git or any other uh, source control systems. And uh, then you can evolve it uh, during your application uh, uh, development. Uh, so uh, if in case you have any question, don't uh, feel free to ask, ask them in the Q&A section. Uh, and I will start jumping in, into the actual code. <clears throat> I will stop sharing a presentation and stop sh start sharing my code editor. Don't be afraid of it. So here is my code editor. Desktop. So uh, what we have here is uh, our exemplars. Uh, can you see it? Let me check. Yeah, you can see it. I think it's a little bit too small. Uh, so. Uh, in this particular example, I already prepared for you a Terraform, but I will go through it with you. What I try to build here basically is uh, uh, the picture below. For, so for first of all, I need to set up our AWS infrastructure. AWS infrastructure here is a VPC plus um, database instance. In this particular example, I use uh, Amazon uh, RDS instance. Uh, for Postgres. This described here as a 
CDC database. This database will be used as our uh, starting point. I already applied this Terraform, so uh, because sometimes it can take some time. Uh, at this instance, usually it takes five to ten minutes to set up, so do not waste the time. I already prepared it. But here I describe all necessary parameters. There is an important thing to consider. First of all, we need to specify engine, class of a database, type of a database, uh, our basic credentials here. Also, we need to set up a connectivity. This is quite important for this particular case because I create for my, in a matter of simplicity this instance in a public subnet. This subnet is exposed to internet. And so I don't want to be uh, hugged by someone and I limit access to this database to what specific IP addresses. This is really easy to do with a Terraform and uh, I will show how to do this. So uh, here we see that uh, there is applied security groups to this particular database. And if I jump to definition of this security group, I will see the list of IP addresses that I white listed here. Uh, these IP addresses I took from our, our own documentation, double cloud documentation. So our double cloud platform can access this, this database uh, to reach the change data capture. And also, I did add, I'll add my, myself, my local IP address to this database, so I can actually access this database from my local laptop. Oops, and type. So this is quite easy, and everything else is automatically handled by the Terraform. You apply the database, and you will see this database in a UI. Let me show this database in UI, where it is. Yeah. So this is my database created in uh, UI. Uh, this is quite simple, quite easy, nothing fancy here. This is more or less straightforward thing from a documentation for Terraform for AWS. Let's jump to the next point. The next point is more interesting. Okay, we have this database and we need to somehow connect it to the Kafka. I did create a Kafka, which is a pretty similar approach, but I created this Kafka in a double cloud. I set up the project in a double cloud and say that I want a small instance of a Kafka with 32 GB of RAM. Also, I expose this Kafka to my local IP address. And that's it. This Kafka is already into different cloud provider, but they live in the same Terraform, which is quite handy here. So uh, this is a double cloud interface and we have a, our Kafka cluster, this one. So let me make it bigger. This cluster is created by this Terraform. Uh, everything is set up by Terraform. I just apply this and here we are. So the next thing we need to do is connect them somehow. This is actually a task which is usually take most of the time because connectivity between uh, 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 stuff is hard and then you need to deploy this application somehow. This where the Terraform and Double Cloud actually comes to rescue. We have a managed transfer service which allow you to run certain transfer activity and also one of such activities is possibility to run Postgres to transfer to the Kafka activity. I did not create this cluster, this uh, stuff uh, before, but I have the Terraform for that. So what we need to set up here uh, and which is not so complicated to stop. We need to stop a source endpoint here. This is a description of our source endpoint. I took my Postgres instance and reference here into Double Cloud Terraform. Double Cloud Terraform and any other actual Terraform uh, specify all necessary parameters for this kind of things. Transfer contains two entities, source endpoint, target endpoint, and connection between them. So I need, first of all, set up a source endpoint. Source endpoint is a sort of connection with a connection string. And for the connection strings, I need the credentials. And to not pass those credentials by plain text, I can reference here by a variable. So I actually can treat my infrastructure as the code, which is a very nice, uh, nice approach here. And I can reference address of an instance of database created in AWS for this particular endpoint. So I reference here to CDC database dot address, which is an address of a uh, Amazon database. Then I reference to DB name and a username and pass a password. This thing create an endpoint in a double cloud. And let's comment out this for now and try to apply it. This is quite fast entity, so I can apply it right here. What I should do here is just run a simple Terraform apply. 
think it's too small, but I just run the Terraform apply. The Terraform apply usually uh, took a couple minutes to run, and it prompted me that I want to add one new entity. This entity, this lengthy configuration of a AWS endpoint. So let's add it. And I from the, the I okay with the, this plan. And here we go. Apply, apply is a complete resource one added. One resource added. So let's observe these resources in UI. So uh, we have transfer section and in endpoints, we have one new endpoint. Why it's named so weird? It's not Chinook, it's CDC PG So let's apply one more time. This basically should change this endpoint and take a look. It, it would take a, a look to observe what exactly we have in the cloud, what we have in our code, and see it would, but it should replace the source because I changed the name. I agree with this. Let's apply this change. Done. One uh, one resource added, one resource destroyed. Let's update the list of endpoints here. Yep, nice. We have our Postgres source set up with the right name. Next thing, we need to set up a Kafka target. This setup is quite easy because we use a double cloud Kafka, but for other Kafkas, it's not so hard to be honest. So I set specify the reference to a cluster ID. I specify a username, a password would be inferred automatically uh, for double cloud, for not double cloud entities, you should pass a password, but we can actually pass it here. Something like this. And uh, I also specify as a settings, but it's not, not really interesting settings. So uh, let's pass a password for matter of uh, education. So I can copy the password from the UI, for example, if you have some password before and pass it. This is a password for this particular Kafka. So if we apply this, uh, this will add one more endpoint. As you remember, we have currently two. Uh, we have currently just this one created by this uh, demo. It should be at one more. Yeah, it prompted me that I want to create one new endpoint. It's pretty small, but I think you can, no, I can't make it because sorry for that case. Uh, and uh, I will agree with this. One resource added. Let's refresh here. And here we are, we have CDC source and CDC target. Okay, the two endpoints is created. The last pieces need to connect them in double cloud. For this, we have another entity called transfer. Let's connect them. This is transfer entity is basically source ID, target ID, and a type. Let's apply it. To create one more entity in our transfer section because there is no transfer sector currently. Okay, I'm agree with that. Let's create entities. And it took a little bit longer because I tried to activate this uh, on the background, but it should take a lot of a time. So yeah, we have an uh, entity and it's running. So we have the transfer stuff. But unfortunately, this transfer is transfer nothing because the database is empty and we need to write some data into it. Let's jump to a console to try to observe this data. Okay, I will clear my console here. I will clear my console here. Let's connect to our Postgres instance. This is my CDC DB instance from AWS. I can show you that there is uh, one table, my little pony, and this table should be empty. Yep, there is no rows into this table. Let's insert some rows. I already prepared a query for this. Yeah, let's insert three ponies into this uh, table. So I create a three rows. So these three rows should be translated into the Kafka via this transfer. This is done in the background because transfer is already running. 
uh, how we can observe that this data is there. First of all, we can observe it via UI or uh, console utility. So we have our UI and in UI we have something running and uh, everything is should be fine. Nothing is broken. And in a cluster page uh, for CDC Kafka, we should uh, see one topic. Yep, we have one topic, CDC data dot public dot my little point. Let's try to see what inside of this data. For well, that we can use some uh, utility, but I pers personally write a small application to consume this data. I read it this application in Go. I will briefly show you in the at the end of the of this uh, webinar. I will share the link to this code so you can run it on your own. Uh, but for matter of simplicity, I will just show you this code. So this is a simple Go application which took a connection to a Kafka, read message one by one, parse them as Debezium message, Debezium is a format of this message, and then prompt what change here. Uh, the interesting part of this particular application is a format of a message. The format of a message in a Kafka is quite important topic. Uh, in our case, we utilize a Debezium compatible parser, Debezium compatible, compatible writer. The Debezium itself provides a very nice way of showing, of um, uh, structuring change data capture data. I can show you how it looks in a console uh, with a See kit, yeah. I prepare this comment. I will read uh, first three messages and prompt it to console. And yeah, this is our first three messages. So as you can see, it's like a JSON blob with some structure. Let's try to structurize it. Okay. Yep. So this data is, let me make it a little bit bigger. This data contains a payload, which is event, what happens with one particular rows. It contains value after our twinkle sparkle pony. Uh, it contains operation type, some meta information about what happens in this uh, particular event and a schema of this event. Schema, it's a number of columns of original table. And actually it's right the name, the type, etc. So uh, there is uh, a, a, a nice thing, a nice information list for, for what we have. So uh, what we can use, uh, what we can do with this information, we can actually analyze in the Kafka topic, the events based on the operation. In this particular case, I want to write an application that take on uh, each new pony and notify them. I already did that. So I parse this divisional message. There is a format that I tried to parse. It's mimic our JSON for, uh, format, the operation after and before, transaction, timestamp. So I switch by operation type. And if we have a create operation, I salute to pony. So let's write this code. Uh, let's run this code and see what what we what we will receive in our console. So I uh, already compile it. So let's do this code. A little thing. I run this consumer. I pass my uh, broker URL. It's address for my Kafka. I pass a username and a password. I pass a topic name. So uh, it should consume a three ponies and prompt me their names. Yep, the three ponies and salute. Let's then try to do something else with those pony. Because we already uh, can do not just in sorts, but for example, update. Let's update our pony description for two of our ponies, so Twinkle Sparky and Rainbow Dash, to salute everyone. I update two rows, and here we are. Our two uh, changes in the pony. How how this works? Uh, what basically happens under the hood? I write data to the Postgres database. 
This Postgres database is connected by transfer with the Kafka. Transfer is uh, reading the write ahead log of this Postgres database, decode these logs, form a message in the Debezium compatible format and push it to a Kafka. So our consumer can consume this data. And all of this is set up by single file of a Terraform. It's kind of magic, but it's actually not. So uh, this kind of uh, activity can be uh, utilized more. I can actually provide you the DLD functionality as well. This is prepared somewhere. Yeah, here is my delete statement. So I try to delete the rainbow dash uh, pony, which is a second one. So I delete pony and oops, someone deleted my pony. It's pony number two. Press F in chat to pay respect. So this is a basic uh, scenario what we can do with a change data capture in a Kafka. It's more or less simple, but you can utilize this pattern and approach to build quite powerful application. There is a, a bunch of uh, patterns and can be uh, uh, design pattern actually that can be used with change data capture like outbox pattern, like uh, decoupling the application or for example, uh, migrating away some activities from monolithic application to microservice. Uh, for example, you have old application, monolithic application, and you need to extract some part of functionality from it into another application, but you need still to communicate with this application. And this application is old and very hard to, uh, to change. So you just, instead of writing some code into this application, you just subscribe to a data in this application. And in this case, a table become more or less like a contract and Kafka become uh, like a message pass for you. And, and change data capture in a CDC is a very nice way to implement this. Usually uh, managing the CDC is a hard, but with a Terraform and the cloud providers that can handle this, it's much easier. With a Terraform, you can just write a code that say, I want this database to this Kafka, and here we are, you have everything in place. Another important thing that you can actually do with this data uh, is analyze it for for later usage. For example, you want to build sort of um, uh, sort of an auditing system, like when change something appears in this table and this change seems to be suspicious, you need to notify someone. Uh, for that, you can stream your all your changes into analytical database, uh, normalize it somehow, and then build the queries dashboards on top of it. For example, you can utilize a ClickHouse power uh, for this and uh, uh, like track how many new ponies appear in our pony database and how often they deleted and how often they changed. This can be useful for a lot of use cases. So this is a powerful concept, powerful approach. Um, in, and with modern technology and tools, it's really easy to uh, make it uh, scalable because adding new new database to this infrastructure is just adding one more transfer into the Terraform. So this is what we actually built. It's uh, not not the this particular example, but uh, a little bit simplified version of this example. We had our pony database. We have a small transfer that transfer ponies into a Kafka, and we have our Kafka salute uh, notifier that took. Uh, Pony notifier that took messages from a Kafka, parked them, and notify about what happens to our ponies. This is a, a small but yet powerful application. You can extend each uh, part of this independently. Uh, the transfers can be scaled, adding more transfers, but simply adding more Terraform modules here, more, more Terraform transfers. Uh, application can do more complicated logic and database itself, it also can evolve quite easy. You can add new tables here, for example. Let's uh, let's not forget that I just stream one particular table, but you can stream a lot of the tables if you have more than one and you will receive more topics than one. Um, I think this is all that I have for demo today, actually. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I can start answering a question if I have some. Uh, don't hesitate to ask them in a chat or in a Q&A section. Uh, feel free to join our LinkedIn and our Slack. Uh, 
Uh, and don't forget, I will think that we have uh, somewhere in LinkedIn the link to this demo application. So you can try to play with it on your own. Uh, you can simply you can join uh, Double Cloud and register for the Double Cloud uh, uh, in in Double Cloud uh, tri trial and uh, uh, and uh, use this uh, Terraform example for, for you for you to play. Okay, uh, there is a question: Is the reason why you would use Double Cloud or just keep in Kafka? Yeah. Actually, it's uh, there is some reasoning. Uh, most of them we have Kafka a little bit slightly cheaper. We have a, a, a little bit different approach of handling. Uh, we have a little bit more performant Kafka and on a cheaper end in terms of the cheapest Kafka. Uh, in uh, in pre price performance comparison, it is also a little bit. Uh, Better, but also double cloud Kafka allow you to run the Kafka not just on top of AWS. Double cloud provide a managed service on top of other cloud providers, so that your Kafka can be either in AWS and in a GCP if you wanna. And also, it can allow it allow you to easily integrate into other double cloud platforms such as a transfer and uh, and uh, ClickHouse. So you can easily ingest it uh, more easily ingest it uh, into Kafka data with a transfer and extract data from Kafka with a transfer much easier. And we have uh, an other toolkit for you to build your real time uh, stack. But in it's matter more like matter of a, of a preference. In some cases, AWS Kafka is more or less okay, and actually you can still do same thing with double, double cloud transfer and AWS Kafka. But you will need to set up not just a uh, double cloud connection to Kafka, but uh, on-premise connection to Kafka, like specifying the addresses, specifying the password, and etc. So it's it you can use uh, AWS Kafka, but AWS Kafka is a little bit more pricey and it's not so uh, performant. Uh, yeah, we have another th things. Uh, we actually have a nice blog post about comparing AWS Kafka and our Kafka. Uh, I think we can refer to that. What else? Yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, uh, any more questions, guys? Uh, uh, yeah, you can use the Basium to insert messages. Uh, uh, there is a two questions. Uh, you can yes, use the Basium to insert messages to Kafka directly, but the Basium usually deployed into a Kafka. Uh, the the Basium itself it's a bit harder to manage because it's not a separate entity, but it's embedded into a Kafka, and the Basium itself cannot have like. Uh, it, it's it it doesn't have a Terraform provider. It's just a module for Kafka, and also another aspect of a Debezium, It can scale separately from a Kafka. Currently, there is some uh, some uh, open source tools that allow you to run Debezium outside of a Kafka, but it's not managed way. You have to manage them on the on on your own. It's a bit harder. And the main benefit here of using something managed is that you don't care about how to run it and where it runs. You just specify it in, in your Terraform file. So it's more easy to manage where, and you can run more Debezium uh, uh, sources for single Kafka. You can run like hundreds of, connect like hundreds of database to a single Kafka instance with no, with no any major issues on the Kafka side. Kafka would handle this traffic easily. Okay, uh, I will share the link to the code. I think uh, I think I should I should do this uh, a bit later. I would share this to the LinkedIn. So subscribe to LinkedIn. <laughs> Selective CDC. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the question, the next question was about assisting to select in CDC. Yes, that's true. I'm, I miss this point in uh, in this. Uh, in this demo for simplicity reason, but actually where is my code? Yeah, here's my code. You can specify it's on a transfer level, like a data, op uh, data objects, and you can specify that I want to transfer just my ponytail. Public, so this will limit the transfer just to one table. This particular transfer will actually transfer all data all tables in a database uh, for matters of simplicity. I skip this part, but it actually can be done in the in this way. Yeah. 
So it will be schema goals. How can Terraform propagate? Yeah, actually, it's not the case for Terraform. It's more case for the transfer itself. Uh, the Basium, I also as a as a transfer can actually propagate the so, such changes. It's uh, have a in a transfer have a special topstone event that specify the change schema changed, and you can sub subscribe to so change of the schema quite easily. The Terraform here is not much a case because Terraform just set up an infrastructure for you. Uh, this kind of things happens inside of a data plane, which is already like transfer. So uh, inside of a transfer, there is a, uh, the support of the schema changes. But the Terraform itself is just more like set up in the list of entities to transfer and set up a list of uh, uh, Entities to connect, kind of. Yep. Okay, okay. I think I can share a link to this permalink and I can answer it here. Yeah, this link should work actually. This link for our examples, we have more examples here. Also, uh, there is some examples how to connect Kafka to a click house. So, yeah. I think I exposed it twice. Any more question, guys? I can one more thing add to our particular Kafka, which is quite uh, related to the previous question in regards to schema compatibility. Our Kafka support, uh, supports the schema registry, so you can actually connect the Debezium and the schema registry in a transfer all together. And this will ensure your schema consistency. But it's a bit harder to configure, but it's also configurable by, by the Terraform itself. Oh, it's not working. Let me check. Yes, because I forgot to push a branch. Give me a minute. Okay. And now it should work. Yep, yeah. sorry, I forgot to push a branch. <laughs> Now the link should work. I will share a proper link later on the LinkedIn. So subscribe to LinkedIn. And uh, also we will have a textual version of the very same webinar, uh, but I think a bit later, like next week. What limitation of double cloud? That's a good question. Uh, I would say for we have a limited set of connectors uh, for, for, such, for such transfers. Uh, we support major databases here. We have uh, uh, we have a MySQL, Postgres, and uh, and uh, and a MongoDB. This is more than enough for most of the cases. But unfortunately, we don't provide for everyone our Oracle connector. We also have Oracle connector, but it's kind of hard. So we open it for for, for like uh, on demand. Uh, so I would say the main issue here, or main limitation here, is a set of a connector. So if you, for example, have like Cassandra database, we don't support Cassandra, unfortunately, for now. So you have to use other tools. So yeah, this is a main limitation. But in terms of a scale on this, what we actually can, uh, we don't have much limitation. We can run thousands of uh, of uh, change data capture simultaneously for your particular uh, Kafka, and it works perfectly fine. And we also can ingest from a Kafka with a thousands of transfers as well. It, it's it's not a big deal for us. We can scale it uh, as horizontally and vertically. The transfer itself is entities that can scale independently. If you have like, for example, high load Kafka topic and you need, want to ingest it, for example, to a click house or to S3, uh, we can scale it uh, to add more powerful machine to enjoy this data or add more machines to parallelize activity. We can do both of this. And this actually configurable by Terraform. Again, Terraform is a, is a key here. We actually develop the first company. So our Terraform for us is quite important thing. Uh, we use a lot of our own platform in inside of a double cloud to build the double cloud. It's an approach called dog footing. And the Terraform for us is a main tool for implementing this. So most of things that we can do with a double cloud is inside of a platform. 
So limitations here is more about versatility of our tools, versatility of our connectors. But um, beside that, I, I would say we more or less uh, flexible and powerful. Also, in a Kafka, you can connect not just a databases via transfer, but also other variety of sources, for example, Jira or other API kind of sources. We have a bunch of them supporting the transfer. Uh, yeah, latency is a good question. Uh, the latency itself is uh, usually quite small, depends on your region and uh, data locality. If everything in the same region in the same AZ, for example, if you transfer data from uh, RDS instance in Frankfurt to the Kafka instance in the Frankfurt to, and from Kafka to the, for example, ClickHouse in the same Frankfurt, the latency would be extremely small. I would say in a matter of a tens of milliseconds, uh, but this also depends on the database itself. If the database is under load, it can postpone the log replication, uh, logical replication and delay can be slightly bigger. But usually it, in, in, in the same region, delay between Postgres and Kafka, quite small. It's a matter of a milliseconds tens of milliseconds, something like this. In worst case, it can be up to one second, but uh, not, 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 not so big. Well, let's wait a couple more, couple more minutes for questions, guys. If you have, just jump it in the chat. I can also, yeah, yeah. I think that I will add a couple more things uh, uh, with the thanks in the result. Yeah, exactly here. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for our LinkedIn. Uh, we will post some updates and more materials on this topic uh, on LinkedIn later. So uh, keep keep in touch. Also, don't hesitate to go to our website. We have a uh, nice trials for everyone. You can start start trial. Try to touch our platform, understand capabilities. Maybe run this example uh on for your own and try to touch this technology more closer to you uh, uh to play with this technology uh and uh, yeah feel free to contact us also uh, uh uh you can use our slack join our slack uh it's not so popular but but we have some people there you can you can talk, chat with us uh if there is no more questions i think we can wrap it up Oh, key takeaways. Yeah, the key takeaways, I would say here that uh, change data capture with the Kafka uh, suits very well. Kafka is a very powerful tool for streaming change data captures. Change data capture uh, setup in usually complicated. I didn't show you how to set up this uh, for vanilla Kafka, but if you are aware about this technology, you understand that it's kind of hard to set up the Debezium for tens of databases for Kafka. It's it's a really complicated process and it's sometimes clunky. You need to monitor it, you need to observe it, you need to handle a lot of issues. And Terraform here is a nice tool that allow you to set up this easier, more easier. Uh, and uh, the Terraform here act as a the glue between the databases and your Kafka. And uh, this Terraform actually usually bound to some cloud providers. So we as Double Cloud promote ourselves, but uh, our marketing team will not be happy about it. But I would say most of cloud providers nowadays uh, support the Terraform more or less. So you can do the very same approach, not for just this particular aspect, but for everyone. I would also advocate for Terraform as a, as a tool for managing your infrastructure. And uh, another takeaway from this, I would say that it's a nice thing to uh, treat your data pipelines, your data streams as an infrastructure rather than some sort of other Think because a lot of people actually treat uh, pipelines as a separate kind of entity. It's not yet an infrastructure, but it's already something more than just and 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 something that is set up by by one people and one some some engineer. So this is also infrastructure. It's also important. So you have to apply a best practices of infrastructure management, not just for your databases and virtual machine, but also for your data pipelines. And the Terraform with a Double Cloud Health actually allow you to make this happen, make the uh, data pipelines as infrastructure. A bit lengthy answer, but yeah. Oh, that's actually a good question. No, it's not. It's not slow down storage performance at all. Uh, 
in most of the cases. Uh, for our supported database, for Postgres, MySQL, and uh, MongoDB, uh, CDC is not slow down uh, them at all. Usually, uh, it consumes like, a very little amount of CPU. It's quite easy task for the database to replicate itself because usually they already replicated and it's not affect actual real-time queries. The, in most of the cases, the real-time queries that happens in the database can postpone the replication, but not vice versa. Uh, the queries and heavy load of a storage can uh, slow down change data capture, but not 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 vice versa. And usually, change data capture is quite easy task for any database. In most of the cases, since change data capture in database uh, essentially linear based on how how the uh, database works inside. Uh, they utilize a pattern so-called as write-ahead logs and we utilize it for change data capture. Write-ahead log is a single log file, so it can be that hard to process. And usually database can serve, serve it perfectly. So no, it's not uh, slow down the storage performance in the short. And long, there is a, a little bit more details, but yeah, it can uh, slow down performance. I see one raised hand, actually. I don't know how to process this raised hand. Uh, if you can write the question, you probably should write. I don't know how to how to how 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 to uh, use this raised hands in 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 the zoom. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think there is no more questions left. If no more questions, let's then wrap it up. It was a pleasure to present this topic for you. I think, I hope that you find these things important and helpful for you and you can utilize it in your day-to-day -day practice. And also I hope that you will find the Double Cloud as a platform interesting and our uh, approach of handling data pipelines as an infrastructure as well, interesting. Uh, yeah, I think we can wrap it up. And uh, see you next webinars, I think. <laughs>